So I stepped into the elevator and I punched in number 10. And when I got out of it, I saw that the, the walls and the hallway was kind of covered in like graffiti-like paintings and with uh, portraits of like Stevie Wonder, Aretha Franklin, Whitney Houston, Ray Charles, like the, the big ones, you know. And so I took my first, first right. And before I even got to ring the bell, they kind of buzzed me in. And I stepped in, the studio manager welcomed me. And he took me to one of the studios, one of the control rooms. It was beautiful. Like, they had like custom made Louis Vuitton fabrics on the walls and, you know, handmade speakers and membranes from Italy. He asked me a couple of questions and I answered as best as I could. And then he said, all right, you start on Monday. Actually, I think it was a Tuesday. Yeah, it was a Tuesday. You know, I was a huge relief for me because I kind of gambled a lot by going to New York City and trying to get that job at that studio. I didn't know what to expect. But when I got back on Tuesday and realized that, oh shit. I'm going to be working on Beyonce's album for the next three months. It kind of blew me away a little bit. It was a surreal experience. I, I, you know, being around like these huge artists like Beyonce, Jay-Z, Timbaland, Pharrell Williams, Alicia Keys, every day. I didn't learn so much about the technical aspects of it as much as I did about just being in the vibe, feeling that vibe. And that really inspired me. I mean, I I worked like 26 hours, 26 hours at a time and I went back. I stayed in Brooklyn at that time, so I went back and I slept for a couple of hours and then went right back. I barely saw New York City. And somehow that felt like the most New York City thing to do. <laughs> I liked it though. I never felt stressed. It was just a high pace. But e- e- even though I was in a setting where it was like really closely related to my dreams and what I wanted to do, I didn't identify myself in being that or sound engineer, like that technical assistant that I was pursuing by working there. I felt like I had more to give. I need to focus on what it is that I can do with my own resources, not relying on big studio equipment, you know, big contacts, big, like everything big, everything upscale. I wanted to kind of go get back to basics. So I decided to go back to Sweden and I did. So I went back to this, to this island where I've spent most of my life. And this is an island where, you know, we got electricity in the 80s. And when I was young, we had to go into mainland to get fresh water. And even though we had a well on the island, there would often be a water shortage. So that it was all muddy, kind of like brown. As I got more and more into audiovisuals and uh, studying audiovisuals at the university, I I found myself in the project of uh, Ilial. And the more I discovered it, the more I realized that this is it. Like I can't hold back anything. I can't restrain myself. So I guess the time in New York City kind of. Uh, really boosted me in my belief in that, you know, being around those people, I I realized that they are here because they have fully invested in what they are good at and what they could be potentially better at. 